Welcome. Today I'm going to show you guys how to play Pelican Bay. Now this is kind of an interesting uh, tile laying game. It kind of reminds me of Carcassonne because in this tile laying game, just like in Carcassonne, you have to make sure your tiles are going to match the corresponding landscape. So water has to be touching water, beach has to be touching beach, and forest has to be touching forest when you place a tile. That's just one of the things, though, that you have to do in this game. There's actually something else you'll have to do when you're placing tiles. And so that's why we will be doing a how to play video for this, because it's not just simply placing one tile. You actually will be trying to place two tiles on your turn, and that's what's really interesting about this game. So let's ch take a look. First of all, uh, we have these uh, three sun tokens. You'll place them in front of three separate piles with uh, 16, 16 landscape tiles in each pile. So there's 16 in this one, 16 in this one, and 16 in this one. Then you'll notice over here we have a separate pile, a fourth pile. It's got sort of a lock and needs a key, obviously. Lock and key tile is placed on top of these, which is only 16 tiles. So while these are 17, you'll have a separate uh, stack of tiles that will be 16 tiles, and this will be on top of it. This stack will be only accessible at the end of the game. When all of the players have taken all of the tiles from here, and they can no longer draw more tiles from the three stacks, then this will get unlocked, and they can draw from here. But then after that, everybody gets basically one more turn in the final round using these tiles here and that also means that not necessarily all of these tiles will be used up in the game but it does allow everyone a possible extra turn or should i say extra last turn but that doesn't necessarily mean as well that will be the case because in this game you can take bonus turns We'll talk about how you actually get a bonus turn, but it's possible to take a turn, then another turn, then another turn, then another turn, before another po po another player gets to go. It is possible that that can happen, but it's not likely to happen too often. But it, it, it can happen. So, after you have separated all of these, then whoever's the first player, whoever is... You know, chosen for first player, they're going to get this token here. That's all that's good for. First player token. Okay. And then uh, the player who is not going first, the player to the right of the player who is obviously not going first because we uh, go clockwise. So the per first player who goes first, it's going to go clockwise for them all the way around. And so the player to that player's right would be last. They're actually going to be doing the first placement of tiles. So they're going to place these tiles first. That's what they're going to do. So let's move these tiles out of the way. They will take one tile from each of the piles. We'll set these pelicans, blue pelicans, off to the side as well. They'll take one of each, and then they will place them down um, to form our starting... Uh, play area, if you will. So we get these out of the way. Okay, and then they have to match a, a, a landscape type area. So when you place these, you're trying to place them, for the beginning of the game at least, you're trying to form one land mass. And they all have to be uh, matching that land mass. So like for this instance, this variation here, they're all uh, touching exactly what they're supposed to be touching. This sand is, t this beach is touching this beach, this forest is touching that forest. So it works out just fine. But that's how you have to place them like that. Then the game can begin. And so the first player, everyone is going to get to start with, first of all, two of these. So let's set it up for a two player game. I get a starting hand of two tiles. And uh, Manta, who you can't see on screen at the moment, he gets two tiles as well. So we'll just place his tiles over there. And uh, so now you can look at your tiles 
and try to figure out how you can place these. Now, you can, if you want to, just place one tile. That's allowed. You do not have to place two. And that could be an option right there. But you, do, you might want to try to place both of them. And if you do place both of, both of them, there is a placement rule besides just simply making sure that the tiles match where they're going to go. Like, you could do that, for instance. But here's the thing. You're only allowed to choose one of the three areas or three types of landscapes in this game. You choose ocean, or water I should say, beach, or forest. So for instance, if I'm going to choose water, and I place this here, and it still connects here, because beach to beach and water to water, I'm allowed to do that, because I said water. I'm trying to match beat water. But this one means that I'd also have to use this tile if I'm going to do two tiles, and it also has to be able to match up with water as well. And it has to be the same water. It can't be this water over here. It has to be the same water. So for instance, that would not work. But the cool thing is you do not have to place this in the exact same area as this one. But you do have to sort of place this so that two edges are going to be matching two edges. So for instance, I could try maybe over here, but once again, it wouldn't work over here because there's only one water. And so therefore, this tile could not be used to be placed to add to that. So that would not be allowed. So then, obviously, water may not be the good, correct uh, approach with that set. So maybe you'd want to try for maybe a uh, beach instead. Okay, well, there's lots of beach on this one. So maybe, for instance, we could place this one here because that does match up. And then this one could go, let's see here. It's not going to go there, obviously. Um, but it could possibly go, like, for instance, right here. That would be allowed. And so normally, when you place these two tiles, you'd be trying to, if you're going to place them in the same area, you should be placing them at the same time as if they were one big tile to match basically that. That would be allowed just like that, because if they become one big tile in that sense, then they are technically still touching two separate edges, uh, two separate edges of these tiles of the ocean. That's why you would do it that way, for instance. Now, something that we'll never see, you'll never see happen, you'll never see tiles be placed like, for instance, this. That's not allowed. They need to be when you place them and you're done placing them, they both need to be touching two areas. So if you was if you placed this one first, technically the second one would still be attached to this one and this one. And when you place this one, it was attached to this one and this one. And because you're placing them both against the water there, just like that, well, that's still water there, there, there. So that works. So that would be allowed, for instance. You could do that as a placement rule, for instance. And that would be that would work. Now, I didn't close off any areas. In this game, closing off an area is closing off a single landscape. So it's no longer going to be able to be added onto. So you might want to make a landscape bigger, but you also might want to close a landscape as well to score additional points. Now, when you close off an area, you're going to get to place a blue pelican in the in the vicinity of the area that you closed off. Right now, there is no closed off areas, for instance. But that is a possibility that you could do that. And we'll do that as an example here in a short moment. But since I didn't close off any areas at all, now... Now my turn is done, and I'm going to score some points. There's a nice handy uh, score sheet here, score pad here, and pretty much on every single turn, you are going to be scoring some points. It might just be a couple of points, but I think about just about every turn, you'll be able to score points. The only way you won't have a point way of scoring any points at all is if there was no way you could match up a single one of your tiles. If there was no way you could match up a single one of your tiles to two adjacent areas, 
at all, then your turn is done. You actually put those tiles on the bottom of one of these piles here and take two in its place. That's not likely to happen, but if it does happen, you basically lose your turn and you score no points at all. But that means if that doesn't happen, which is unlikely, like I said, you are going to score some points. Now, since I didn't close off any areas, I don't get a pelican, and so I just get the points for the area I enlarged. I um, enlarged this water area here with these two tiles, which both attach to the same water area. So now this water area here is three tiles big. One tile, two tiles, three tiles. Make up three water for this huge, this area here. So you score three points. One point for each tile in the area that you enlarged, but just the one that you were stating. So I stated water, for instance. And then that means both of these had to be attached to the same water. I could not, for instance, instead get points for scoring for beach. One, two, three, for instance, because I was going for the water. So that would not be allowed. So what's closing off an area? Well, I wouldn't be able to, I would not be able to close off an area with two, with two right now. But if I used just this tile here, that would close off this water area here. Actually, I wouldn't even be able to do that. But if there was, like, let's say, let's grab another tile, find one that works with my scenario, made a little bit better. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, like that one, for instance. So if it's something like that, if those were already placed, and now it's somebody else's turn and they want to close off this area here with just this one tile, that would be fine. Now, that would be considered closed off, this water area here. And just this tile would be able to be placed. I would not be able to place this one at all because there's no way it could be attached to the same water area. But that's okay because when you are able to close off an area, for instance, the uh, this turning this into like a little pond, you get to grab a blue pelican here Okay, you're gonna grab it, and you're going to place it in the vicinity of that water. You could place it on this tile, you could place it on this tile, you could even do something like that, for instance. So let's just place it, you know, down like that. So there's the blue pelican. Now it's gonna stay there for the moment, because now you get a bonus turn. Whenever you close off an area, you get a bonus turn. So then you'll draw up until you have two of these tiles in hand, and then you'll get another turn before the other player even gets to go. And if you manage to close off another area with one of these tiles or two tiles, then you'll get another blue pelican for that vicinity and you'll get another turn. And this will continue until you can't close off an area. Then you'll score all of the points that you would score for closing, including the points that you get for enlarging an area. So for instance, uh, you would score two points for closing this area off, so you still do not get a lot of points for closing an area. You still get the same amount of points if you were enlarging, but you get extra turns, which increases your points anyways, and you get these blue pelicans too. So, let's see here. Let's just add one to enlarge one area. For instance, let's go with maybe something like this, for instance. We're just going to place this one. Okay, so this was the second, this was the first turn here. This was the second turn. The player just decided to place one of their tiles. And so they enlarged this water area. One, two, three, four, five points make up that water area. They'd also score two more points for closing this. So they would get a lot of points. They would get, obviously, seven points. And then they'd get this little pelican here for their supply, their scoring supply. Okay, for every a uh, blue pelican you have at the end of the game, it's an additional three points. So getting a few uh, getting a few of these pelicans will definitely be worth you doing and trying to close some areas off because you'll get extra points. And there's only seven of these blue um, pelicans. So there is uh, the, since there's a since it's limited to just a few of these blue pelicans, you can't get any additional blue pelicans. So, what happens then? Does that mean you can only close seven areas in the whole game and that's it? No, that's not what that means. So, for instance, if you have 
um, obviously taken this for your personal supply. And all of these have been placed, and there are no more um, blue pelicans because they are being used for something. Then you must use a blue pelican from your supply instead. Just to remind yourself that you have closed an area off, and then you'll get it back. So you will not get extra blue pelicans. You'll just have these seven in the game. So that's something to note. Um, if you want to, you can also use a coin or something like that to indicate um, that you've closed off an area. So that way you can focus on placing tiles for your bonus turn or turns, depending on how many areas you closed off, etc., etc. But those coins will not be added to your supply. You will not get to add coins, nuts, or whatever you're going to use as points, for extra as an extra three points. So that means you can only score a maximum of points with these blue pelicans because there's only seven of them. If you have somehow ended up with all seven in your supply, then you know seven times three is what you know. That's the max amount of points you would get max for blue pelicans so there is a max limit to how many points you would be able to get for blue pelicans anyways so even though you can close more than seven areas you're only going to get the blue pelican points for the first seven areas that you close so that's basically what that means but still that's pretty interesting so you know this is definitely not the easiest game in the world it's pretty simple of course but if you want to try to place two tiles down and you want to make sure that they are touching the same beach or the same uh, ocean or the same forest, that is not always easy. So that might take some time um, figuring out how you're going to get those two tiles placed. And obviously, they still have to be touching two edges at the end of your turn. So you can't be having a long, straight row of tiles you know, going from here to there. That wouldn't be allowed. But here's another thing to note about this game. There is some other complications as well. At the end of your turn, well actually, before the end of your turn even begins, before your first turn even gets started, these sun tokens will be placed down. The player who places a sun token, meaning the player who did these three, t these three tiles here, before the first player even gets to go, is going to put this in a strategic location to prevent a player from placing tiles there. They can place it there. That's allowed. But it does mean that the player who's going first only can only not put tiles here. So it really opens up where he can do what he can do with. But if it's placed here, he can't place any tile here. So that is something to note. So the player obviously would strategically put it in a spot where it would be, you know, adjacent to two tiles. But then, you know, later on, maybe players will be doing this more often. So that's how this works. Now, there's three of these sun tiles. Three of these sun tokens here. So after the first one's been placed, and after the first player who goes... So the player won, they ended their turn. They're going to take another sun from the, uh, you know, extra sun tokens that are still haven't been placed yet. And they're going to place it somewhere else. So that's even going to limit where players can put e more even further. And then the next player who goes, they're going to place the last one and it's going to go somewhere in a difficult position, obviously. So there will be some limit to what can be done. Obviously, it won't be something this impossible because you'll be placing tiles down. There won't be, there simply won't be just simply three tiles there. But it will make it harder to place tiles down. And then when you can no longer place uh, more additional suns, then you'll just simply move one of the suns to another spot, one of the three suns to another location, for instance. And remember, the suns not only block your opponents, but they also block you. So think wisely before placing a sun in a certain spot, because you're also, you can also hurt yourself too. Because once there's three suns out, there's a good chance that the sun is always going to be in a spot that you don't want it to be in, because you placed it there earlier, for instance. So that is something to note. But basically, that's how this game works. So you're going to you're going to score a certain amount of points on your turn. 
you could score a lot of points for a big area. So it, at some point, uh, some areas will get bigger and you'll be adding on to those bigger areas. You're going to get, that means you're going to get more tiles in that score, which means more points, obviously. Now, there is something to note, one more thing to note in this game. There are bridges in this game. So let me see if I can find a bridge. Okay, that's not going to count. But, uh, okay, here's a bridge. So there are two types of bridges. There's bridges that connect forest, and there's bridges that also connect beach. If you place a, um, if you place this, this would obviously not be allowed. But if this forest area was completely closed off, like there was a forest area over here that completely closed it off, like, I don't know, it's hard to find exactly the right one you want without going through every tile you have. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's not going to work. Hold on, let's see here, where can I... That won't work either. Hold on. That's a good tile for this. Oh, here we go. That'll work. Okay. So this looks closed off because because uh, it's it can't be added on here. It can't be added on here. I mean the the forest can't be added on anywhere over here, right? And then you're thinking, oh, it's closed off here too. There, but there's a bridge that crosses to the side. Bridges actually connect the forest. So therefore, this forest is not closed yet because of this bridge. So that's the bummer of bridges. If you're thinking that you're going to be able to close off a forest area now, or a beach for that matter, but there's a bridge that is connected to the either the beach or the forest, it means it's not done yet. So you still have your work cut out for you for finishing it. So... Obviously, there needs to be more tiles up here before you can do that, but you would have to add another one to end it, if if at all possible it could be ended. But basically, that's how that's going to work. And I think I've explained everything that is necessary in order to play this game. So, thank you guys for watching, and uh, leave a like if you guys liked it. Um, thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.